Hey students and families, today's math video will teach you how to create your own clock in order to count elapsed time throughout the week, so stick around. Hey guys, today we will be making a clock. Um, if you can get out a piece of paper, this will help you a lot. So you'll need a piece of paper, you'll need a straight edge. I am using a ruler, so if you can find anything with a straight edge, that'll work just the same. And I am using a big plate. Keep in mind that this big plate is bigger than a piece of paper. So this is a piece of paper that I have, and this big plate it's just much too big to use for this, right? So you're going to need to use something that is a little bit smaller than what I have. If you can find something that is circular shape, it will help you to trace a circle for a clock um, for your first step in making a clock. So find something circular that might be um, this size instead, but not this out outward size. So <clears throat> I'm also using my marker because I am writing on a whiteboard, but you can use a pencil or whatever you think would work best. Step one, I'm going to take my plate and put it face down on my paper or whiteboard or whatever I'm using. Okay, whoops. And then I'm gonna just trace this. I'm gonna make sure that your lines are all touching. Okay, and as you can see, I have a few little spots that I can just touch up really fast. So if you're using a pencil, you can just erase this. This is why it'd be best probably not to use something that's not erasable, like a pen. So <clears throat> we are going to um, make a dot in the middle that will help us to guide ourselves and where the middle of the clock is. And as you can see, mine's actually a little bit off, so I'm going to fix it. You might need to erase a few times before you have your clock exactly the way you want it, and that's just fine. Okay, we don't want to make the circle too huge or too tiny either. So there's my best middle um, when I'm estimating, and it's okay if it isn't perfect, but do your best. Now I'm going to get my, my ruler, and I'm going to put it long, or sorry, sideways like this. And I'm going to go to the middle of my circle and try to put it right in the middle of my, my middle circle that I just drew in the middle of my clock. And once I have that, I'm going to make two tick marks. One over here on the left and one over here on the right. Okay, when I'm done with that, I'll remove my ruler. You should have one mark here and one mark here. I'll make them longer and more noticeable for you. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to do it long ways. Taking my ruler, um, for you it's either a ruler or a straight edge, and you're going to line up the edge with the middle of the small circle in your clock. And the same thing, we're going to put two little tick marks to help us find out where that middle piece is. Okay, so this is what your clock should look like. So far, if you need a few more minutes just to catch up and figure this out, press pause on this video and you can continue when you're ready. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is label these different spots that I've made for myself. So I know that 12 is always on the top, so I'll start with 12. Okay, and just by my knowledge of thinking of what a clock looks like, I know that a 3 goes right here. Then we skip some, we say six goes here. I'm skipping because I don't have my other lines in the middle, so just stick with me. And right here, I'm gonna put a nine. Now I can write the ones that I'm missing. So after 12 on a clock, it doesn't go to 13, it goes to one. So we're going to start with that, and we're going to draw one line right here. I'm gonna draw my other line in between because I know I'll need another one. And that'll help me to figure out if my lines all, my spaces all are giving me um, equal amounts of space. Our clocks aren't going to be perfect, uh, but it would, it's nice to, I guess, make them look as close as possible to a real one. So we're going to make our lines here as well. <clears throat> and then I'm putting after three, I'm going to put four, then I'll put five, and then we already have six. 
and I'm going to make two more lines in between six and nine, and then I'll put seven here and then eight right here. Two more lines in between nine and twelve, and we have ten and eleven. The first thing that you need to do is find 9.30. So find 9.30 a.m. Remember that the shorthand is your hour hand. Okay? And I'm just going to put a shorthand right here and write the word hour. Remember that your long hand is your minute hand. I'm going to write an arrow and then put minute. Alright, go ahead and find the hour and minute, 9.30. Okay, as you can see, I found 9.30 on here. I hope you did too. We have the shorthand, which is our hour hand. So this is my shorthand right here, and it's pointing to the nine because that's my hour. It's nine, so nine. And then I have um, my long hand pointing to the six because I needed to find 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and count out how I got to the six with my long hand, okay? So when I count minutes, minutes are always after these two dots right here when we're talking about time. When we count minutes, we always start from the one. And we don't count like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. We actually count by fives instead. So go ahead and skip count by fives with me. Starting at the one. Ready, set, go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that's where I want to put my long hand on the six because I know that it counts up to 30 when I'm counting by fives. So that's how we're going to write out 930 on our clock. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of math. So I want to know how much time is in between 630 in the morning and 930 in the morning. So I'm going to write 6.30 over here and 9.30 over here, <clears throat> and I need to figure out how I'm going to find this time. So I have 9.30 written out right here already. Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put, <clears throat> let's change our, our hands actually. So we already know that we're trying to get to 9.30, but let's start at 6.30. I think that'll help us out. So let's put our shorthand, which is our hour hand, at 6 and 6.30. Remember, when we counted by 5, so the 30 was also on the 6. So it's perfectly normal for sometimes our hands to be on the same number. This is how we find 6.30. Short and long hand is on here, okay? That's 6.30 6 a.m. We want to see how long it's going to take to get to 9.30. We're going to start here. I'm going to put a dot here to help us move. And then we're going to make little mountains. Let's count until we get to 9. So here's one mountain, two, and three. Okay, so I got to 9 right here. Each of these count as, you know, I'll do this instead. Each of these count as one hour. One hour, one hour. So how many hours is in between 6.30 and 9.30? Go ahead and count how many mountains we made. I hope you came up with the number three because that's how many hours are in between 6.30 and 9.30. And we can see that the minutes are the exact same on both of the numbers. So we know that the minutes don't change. We don't need to find how many minutes are in between these because we already have how many minutes are there. Um, <clears throat> so we have three even hours in between 6.30 and 9.30. And this is a good way that we can find um, elapsed time. We can put the time that we begin at on the clock and we can start counting over. Okay you guys, so in this problem we're actually going to count out our minutes but we're going to be really specific in our minutes. We have 4.10 as our start time and then we have 4.52 as the time that we want to end at. 52 as you can see is not a number that's in the fives multiples. So we're going to have to count even smaller minutes so let's go ahead and put our tick marks in between each of these numbers 
in order to give us our smaller minutes we need. So on any clock that you look at, you're always going to have four spaces. Okay, and now we have a clock that looks pretty realistic. So I'm going to put my um, time on here starting at 4.10. So as you can see, I've put my shorthand, which stands for my hour hand, I've put that pointing to the 4. I've put my, out, my minute hand, which is my long hand, on the 2. So if you think about why I did that, I counted by 5s in order to get to the correct minute. The correct minute was 10. So let's count by 5s until we get to 10 on this clock. We're going to start at 1. Ready, set, go. 5, 10. And that's why I landed on the 2. So we have our start time. I'm going to put a check by that because we've taken care of this now. Now we need to figure out how much time is in between 4.10 and 4.52. This is where the elapsed time calculations come in. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the hour. So in between 4.10 and 4.52, they both have the hour of 4 o'clock, right? So that means that there are no full hours in between 4.10 and 4.52. So down here in my answer box, I'm going to put that there are zero hours. We're going to need to enter in our minutes and just a few, so I'm going to leave that space open. Okay, zero hours. We need to figure out how many minutes. So in our, in our um, key down here, I have written out some things for you guys. We're going to use these hills for hours and these spiking mountains for minutes, okay, when we're counting. We don't have any hours, so we don't need to use that, but we do need to use the mountains for minutes. So, in order to even know where to begin here, we need to figure out where 52 is on the clock. So let's go ahead and think this through. If I'm looking at minutes and I need to find 52, I need to count by five starting at one again. I'm gonna count by fives until I get to 52. Let's see how this works. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Wait a second, I skipped 52. I said 50 and then I said 55 and I know that 52 is somewhere right in the middle. But how am I going to find that? This is how. Each tick mark in between each of your big numbers equal one minute. So when we stop at 50, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, we're going to count over two spaces to get to 52. So we know that 52 is right here. 52 minutes is right here. So we are going to use mountains, our minutes right here, to count our minutes and um, I'll show you how we're going to do that. We put a dot right here where 52 was on purpose. So make sure you have your dot, your big dot, that shows you where the 52 minutes are. Okay, we don't need to count hours. We already established that. So we're gonna start on our minute hand, which is our long hand. And we're gonna put our first, our first mountain. And we're gonna count by fives to begin with. Okay, count with me. Five, we're gonna go all the way to this dot. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and now we're going to count the small tiny ones, so that doesn't mean that we keep counting by fives, we have to count by ones now. So we left off on 40 when we were counting by fives, we're going to count 41 and 42 to get to where we put our big dot where 52 was. So we know that there are 42 minutes in between 4.10 and 4.52 p.m. This is how we are going to find elapsed time within the same hour. So I hope this lesson helped you out. Feel free to use the key of using hills for hours and mountains for minutes throughout the rest of the lessons of this week. Thanks for watching this video on creating a clock of your own. I hope that this clock we created together will help you throughout the rest of our lessons this week. Reach out to me if you need any help. Bye.